A blessed day to each and every one of you. Welcome to today's Kingdom Conversation. I'm so blessed and honored to have another opportunity to come and share conversation, share inspiration, and hope with each of you. Happy holidays to everyone. This is uh, the Christmas season, as we call it here in America, and celebrated around the world in various forms. I certainly Pray that each of you are in the best of health and wealth, mind, body, and soul, and that that will continue into this new year. And so we, let's talk a little bit about what the meaning of Christmas is, what does Christmas really mean in our contemporary society. Um, you notice, biblically speaking, that uh, the early disciples did not recognize what we call Christmas or celebrated the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, at least in the way that it has evolved in our society with the gift giving and uh, celebrations with Christmas lights and such. But nevertheless, any opportunity we have for the name of Christ to be mentioned in a holistic societal way is a good thing. Unfortunately, the word Christ on its own does not get the recognition that we would think if it is to celebrate the birth of Christ. In most secular societies, uh, I think America generally considers itself a Christian nation even though it's a melting pot of various people from various cultures and religions and faiths, races, ethnicities, and such. So here in America, pretty much anything goes. Even within the quote-unquote Christian church, uh, the message of Christmas is lost in all of the celebrations and such, generally speaking. But I want to bring to your mind the meaning of what Christmas is. Even if Jesus was born or was not born during this span of, of time, days, the fact that he was born, that he lived, that he ministered, gives us hope and give us an indication of the love that God has for us. And Jesus was all about expressing the love of God to those, particularly to those who were the outcasts, those who had been rejected, those who were oppressed, those who were downtrodden, those who were burdened. And not seeming to be living in the best state of their existence. And so he showed extreme care, love, and concern for those individuals because they were so oppressed and probably depressed about their life situations. And Jesus came into the earth to deal with that as well as to deal with the primary cause of problems in this world, which is sin. That is violating God's laws or going against the things that God has set in motion to prosper us as people. And so sometimes people can confuse the word sin with certain little things like drinking, smoking, uh, committing adultery, which is a commandment of God. So that one is considered a sin in the eyes of God. But all these other little things that we add to sin, like smoking, drinking, and some denominations, you can't cut your hair, you can't wear pants, and uh, a lot of little trivial things that if people violate their particular rules, they consider them a sinner. But nevertheless, however we classify sin, we must remember that God has, a, has classified sin as the violation of his commandments or his laws. That is, doing what God has 
commanded us not to do as well as not doing what he has commanded that we do. So let's keep that in mind as we talk about and think about the word sin. So Jesus came to pay the penalty for our sin. Not the sins that we had committed as children, because at that point we have not yet committed any sins as a toddler. But Jesus came to pay the penalty for sins past, present, and future. Once we recognize that we have transgressed or disobeyed God's commandments, then we repent. We turn and go in a different direction. Prayerfully, the direction would be the direction that leads us back to God, to God's ways, God's plan, God's will for our lives. And so the earth w was in a condition, a fallen state because of their sin. They were separated from a having a true relationship with God. And Jesus came into the earth in order to Show us the way back to the will of God to display the character, the qualities of what it is to be in obedience to God. And so as we think about this Christmas season, of course, we hear the story of the angels making their proclamation, peace on earth and goodwill toward all men. We know the stories of the three wise men who followed the star and saw baby Jesus lying in a manger. We, 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 we are all familiar with those stories for the most part. But I want us to center in on the word Christmas for just a moment. And oftentimes this word is not even expressed as happy Xmas, which is a more blatant way of Xing Jesus out of the season. More commonly now is happy holidays, which encompass the Christmas and the New Year's holidays, which follows within a week of each other. And with that being the situation that's been in place now for quite a while, even when the word Christmas is mentioned, the fact that Christ's name is the first part of Christmas is lost in the whole conversation. It's not like people are saying Happy Christ Mass. That is, we're celebrating the season, we're gathering in these times because of Christ. Christ is the reason that we're gathering and celebrating and having days off from work and and that uh, and such but obviously in our world children of God that is pretty much lost in the shuffle and unfortunately I'm afraid that the, the generations that are young generations now and even a couple generations back have already lost the meaning of what Christmas is but that doesn't have to stop you from recognizing or acknowledging the importance, the reality, and the value of the birth of Jesus Christ. What that means for us is the guidance and direction that we need, the hope, the inspiration, the strength when we are weak, and the anticipation of future glory to be revealed. So I want to take this time of conversation just to remind you and to inform others that Christ really was born. Christ, Jesus Christ, for those of you who may get lost in the conversation, really lived, he really loved, he really died. He really rose from the dead. He really ascended to the Father in heaven. He really sent the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he's really going to return for his church one day. I want that to be real 
as you think about this holiday Christmas season. And I've thrown it to be a Merry Christ Mass for each and every one of you. There's nothing wrong with celebrating with friends and family, attending functions and parties and buying gifts and exchanging gifts. If that's done in a good spirit of cheerfulness and, and happiness and joyfulness, I'm all for that. But let's do not erase Christ from the celebration. Let's not ex Jesus out of Christmas. So you don't have to, if you're a believer in Christ, and if you are a follower of Christ, of course you you believe and follow him every day of the year, 365 days of the year, 24 hours a day. You are in relationship with the Father through your faith in Christ. You are living an empowered life with the Holy Spirit leading, guiding you as you continually, every day, yield yourself to his leading, to his guidance in your life. Let that be something that you remember. If you, uh, for those of you who may put up Christmas trees or ornaments, perhaps you should get an ornament that said Christ lives. Christ loves. So perhaps someone who may look at your Christmas tree or a Christmas present or a gift, maybe the wrapping paper can be Christ lives, Christ loves. Let this be the mantra uh, for those of you who are listening to this broadcast today. May you, perhaps on your social media pages, hashtag Christ lives, Christ loves. Hallelujah. So that Christ would not be X'd out of Christmas, as some people say, Xmas, happy Xmas. And even when people say Merry Christmas. Let us be quick to remember ourselves that Christ lives and Christ loves. God bless and prosper each of you saints today. May the spirit of Christ live in you. May it come alive in you afresh in this season and continue to glow, grow and glow over into the next calendar years in many more seasons and years to come. God bless and prosper you. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who came, lived, and loved. May we also live and love in remembrance and celebration of the precious gift of life and the opportunity that you've given us for eternal life. Through faith in Jesus, the Christ that we celebrate. Hallelujah. Amen. You've been listening to Kingdom Conversations with Bishop Lyndon Hutcherson of Amazing Grace Ministries. We were blessed that you tuned into today's message and look forward to connecting with you in person or on future podcasts. Feel free to reach out to us for more information about our ministries by visiting our website, Amazing Grace Ministries, at www.agministries.net.